The brand Liquid Imaginaire Imaginary Liquids has been gaining popularity and unfortunately, by the time I decided to purchase their discovery set, it was sold out. I still managed to get my hands on a few samples and today I will present you three of them. And these are Oriental Garden Collection and their names, they really make you think of Arabic fairy tales. Tapis Volant, a flying carpet. What a wonderful name, and you would expect something wonderful and airy, but in fact this fragrance is totally the opposite of what you can imagine. In the center of composition is iris, but it's not a light, beautiful, powdery kind of iris. On the contrary, it's very down-to-earth and very dirty. I like earthy kind of iris when there is oris present, it makes it a bit dusty and here it's not the case. Here it's not oris but spices and the kind of spices I don't really enjoy, especially cloves. So iris with cloves, these are the main notes that you'd get in here. What's interesting about this fragrance is the way bergamot is acting in here. In fact, you don't feel citrusy opening, that's where you'd usually find bergamot. You find bergamot later, when spices start opening up, that's when bergamot comes out. And it doesn't come out as a nice citrus, it comes out as a bitter bergamot skin, again mixed with the spices. Staying close to the same fairy tale theme, I would like to try Beveur du Vent, Drinking Wind. Let's see what this one's about. A lot of pepper, wood and leather, very masculine from the very beginning. Again, I don't know why the wind is in the name of this fragrance, because there is nothing airy, windy and light in here. A really strange composition of herbs, I would say. And it's kind of intense and earthy and dirty at the same time, and feels like dirty oil type of thing. And there's also something animalistic in here, although none of the animalistic ingredients is listed. I just had to go and wash my wrist, and after washing my wrist, it actually became a bit nicer. The dirtiness becomes softer, and tarragon starts coming out of all the herbs in here, with a very soft and nice leather. So I suspect the dry down of this fragrance would be nicer, although I did not have patience to wear it throughout, because it was just annoying me with the, all this herbal and pharmaceutical intensity. My favorite out of three is Fleur de Sable, Sandy Flower. And this is an imaginary flower, but in reality, it smells like fruits to me. In the official pyramid, you see eglantine rose. And while I find most roses in fragrances to be very annoying, eglantine is an exception, because it's kind of translucent, transparent, and very airy. In here, eglantine rose is present with a tiny, tiny touch of salt, which makes it even more airy. Mostly what I get from this fragrance is fruits. And surprisingly, I get some kind of bananas, but not real fruit bananas, but more like a banana chewing gum. You remember those uh, chewing gums called Love Ease, the banana flavor? That's how it smells to me. This is just so delicious. If you look at the olfactive pyramid, you will also see that there's a lot of pepper. You get black pepper, pink pepper, paprika and oris. And yes, these notes are in here, but they are kind of mixed together and they only capture maybe 5% of the fragrance. They don't dominate or ruin the fruitiness here. And fruity musk is just wonderful here as well. It's just complementing the entire composition. But overall, I would say that this perfume reminds me of Juicy Couture. And I know a lot of lovers of niche fragrances don't like Juicy Couture, but for me, this is a favorite brand in the cheapy section. This is a wonderful, fruity, summer kind of fragrance. I definitely will put it in my top five this summer.